winter is the time of year to prune our woody shrubs and trees, but many gardeners approach pruning with a little bit of hesitation. So today we're going to look at how plants respond to pruning and different types of cuts to hopefully take a little bit of that anxiety away. So there's three main different cuts that we're going to talk about, which are pinching, heading, and thinning. So let's start with actually some herbaceous plants when we talk about pinching. And pinching is the removal of the very tip of the plant, the growing point. And it's called pinching because we don't use tools for this. We just use our fingers to remove the material. And what is happening here is the growing point, the plant material produces a hormone called auxin. And this chemical prevents any of these buds lower down the stem from opening up and growing. And so when we remove that, we reduce the amount of auxin flowing down the stem, which allows buds lower down to open up and grow. And any branches lower down to grow more so than they would with the control of that tip. And so what we find is when we tip a plant, we go from something that's rather leggy to a much more full plant, like we have with the copper plant or the coleus here. And so it's a way to form plant growth. Now there are applications on woody plants, particularly with young shrubs. Uh, we would go ahead and pinch that growing tip again, which will cause the buds down here to open up. And then in our pines and other needled evergreens, the way we control growth in the spring is by pinching the new candles or the new growth to reduce the growth. Now let's look at another form of pruning. A heading cut is similar to a pinching cut, but we're removing more plant material. And what a heading cut is, is cutting back stems by varying degrees. And in general, the farther you cut a stem back, the stronger the regrowth response will be to that. Also, the more vigorous the stem is that you cut, the more vigorous the response. And one of the applications we use with a heading cut is for shaping a shrub or a tree. And we can see here, this is a nine bark and there's two more adjacent to it, which have a very full branching habit, but this one is a little lopsided. So I am cutting this large branch back pretty far down. I want to encourage a strong response of branching from the buds down here. And that'll help fill in this side of the shrub and improve the overall shape. Another application of heading cuts is with newly planted trees and shrubs. We can see a nice example with our button bush. This plant did not receive a heading cut early in its development, and it's grown with a single branch or trunk, whereas the other button bushes were cut back early on in development, and so they have a more branched habit. And so this is a nice way to visualize the plant and how it responds to that type of cut. A very drastic example of the use of heading cuts is in fruit trees, as you can see with the strong branching patterns in an orchard. Now, sometimes gardeners are very surprised at the strong response of a plant to pruning. When they come in thinking they're controlling the plant size and it responds with vigorous growth, the problem is that a heading cut was used instead of a thinning cut. So let's look at one last cut that's the best technique to reduce size and control growth. A thinning cut removes a branch at its point of origin where it intersects with another branch or the trunk of a tree. And there's very little response in terms of growth from this type of cut. So we don't stimulate a large amount of regrowth. And so just an example coming in and cutting at that intersection. Now sometimes this might mean way down at the bottom of a plant. This type of cut is the best way to maintain the natural form of the plant while reducing the overall size. Hopefully these tips will help you better understand how plants respond to pruning and selecting the most appropriate type of cut. <music>